Do you feel like you're sounding like a broken record every time you try to talk to your husband? Are you starting to worry that the kids are seeing and picking up on those less than healthy patterns? Or maybe you're just exhausted from either trying to keep it under control or constantly changing it. If that's you, I feel your pain and I think you're gonna really like this video because today we're gonna to talk about three things you can do right now to change it. If you don't know me, my name is Olga Vachareva. I am a relationships coach and advanced fast GFT practitioner. And I'm very excited to share with you today three things that you can do right now to feel heard and to improve your communication. Now, first of all, I know how you feel. I've been in your shoes as in my first marriage, communication was something that just didn't work despite of the number of books that I read and number of courses that I read. And I was someone who was constantly working on myself. So I was doing meditation, I was doing tapping, I was doing yoga, just about anything under the sun, including four different counselors, I have tried that. So what I'm about to teach you is something that I've learned the hard way and I wanna shorten the learning curve for you as you're going through this journey. Now, I am in a happy, connected relationship right now, and it was a deliberate creation, and actually it was such a beautiful creation that it changed my whole life, and it helped me become who I am right now, sharing the joy, spreading the love, and helping other women do the same. So first thing that you're probably thinking, wait a second, Olga, isn't it takes two to tango? Absolutely it does, but here's the truth. As you changing your food work through this work, as you starting to do something different, your partner can no longer do salsa. His footwork also will start changing as you do. Now, you have to be consistent with it because what I'm seeing women is doing this. They're going up and down, up and down, up and down, and then they're wondering how things are not changing. You have to be consistent with your changes and vibration. So as you change in your footwork, your partner's footwork also will change which means your relationship will change. Now, this change could be is that it will run its course and you peacefully, semi-peacefully will separate and you find somebody who fits you better, or your relationship will actually improve and you will create something that's really, really beautiful versus trying to manage and stay in a mediocre relationship. So let's start. So the first thing that I want you to consider or think about in your communication, whether it's something little and you just have to repeat the same thing over and over and you go like, oh my gosh, I know I told him that. I know I said that before and it makes you feel almost like insane. So what I notice, what I want to notice to know, what I want you to notice is what are you actually feeling as you're saying those things? Especially if this is something that you try to change for years and you haven't actually cleared the negative energy behind it, the chances are your emotions speak louder than your words. In other words, 80% of our communication is nonverbal. Only 20% of things that we're saying are actually verbal things. I would argue it's actually more. Let me give you an example. Now imagine you being really heartbroken and just very upset and your husband say, I love you. And you go like, well, I love you too. Did you hear the tone? Did you hear the emotions in it? Now, let me show you something else. I'm going to say something to my husband right now that is totally not positive. I'm going to say words, you're horrible. Watch, ready? You're horrible. Do you feel the energy? Do you feel how different it is? That tone was playful and sexy and juicy and exciting, right? There was nothing negative about it. And so I remember doing this exercise from a book because I read like just about every book on the planet about relationships, about writing down 40 things that you're grateful for in your husband. And I remember writing it down and handing it to him and he just put it on the table. I was like, oh my gosh, I just spent a week trying to get 40 things. But the energy that I felt toward him for one reason or the other, wasn't the one of gratitude. So he couldn't receive it. Now, there was some other factors in that marriage, like he wasn't conscious, and he just never became conscious enough for us to connect. But the bottom line is the energy behind it is totally different. So start paying attention. What are you really saying? What are you really communicating? Because here's the truth, and you probably heard that, your stress center, your amygdala is getting wind up every time you're getting into this place 
of worrying or fear or just frustration and that gets communicated more than any of your words so when you and your husband are in this place when it's constant tension and constant fight or flight he's fighting too and he's flying too and so it's hard for him to be receptive to anything productive or that you're trying to say because he's also running away I hope it makes a little bit sense. So number one, change your language and change your body language. Your body language is very, very telling. Now, how do you change it? It's a great question. Start noticing what you're really feeling inside because that's what you're communicating, right? And change and change those feelings. So the second thing that I wanna to talk to you about is creating a safe container for you to actually have those conversations, right? Me and Ernie, we call it saying microscopic truth. We also have specific things set up in our calendar that help us connect on a weekly basis. Now, this is something that I teach my private clients in my Tap Into Love program, actually unit seven is completely about this things alone. It's seven habits of happy couples. And they go in details on this. But today, I wanted to share with you three things that we are doing, and I'm going to go in detail on one of them. So every week we have special containers for communication. So the first one has to do with business meeting. The second one is a date night. And the third one is something that we call hard talk. So what I wanna to talk to you about is that hard talk thing. Now, you probably might be feeling like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna do any hard talk with that man right now. <laughs> I can't even figure out how to do basic talk with him. But that's just it. I think women who come to me, who my community, who watch my videos, they want to have hard talks with their man. They want to figure out how to go deeper and talk about intimate stuff and scary stuff and big dreams. And that's how you want to start doing it. Don't do it for him. Do it for you. You want to start practicing. Now, if he's not receptive to it, it's also an important information for you. You are gathering the data to make a decision. So start taking this little step to get the data. The way the hard talk wa works, it's actually very simple. So you and your, your man, you sit down together and you just have a conversation. Now, what we do is we have a little ritual about it. So first of all, it's every Wednesday night, uh, the kids are asleep and we have either a glass of wine or a cup of tea and none of us is hungry, none of us is thirsty, none of us need to use the restroom, right? So all of these needs need to be taken care of. Have you ever tried to talk to your man before dinner? Bad idea don't do it <laughs> right so make sure that everybody basic needs are net basic needs are met so you can actually go to deeper stuff right and so we start by actually putting our hands on our heart and we breathe in together for a few seconds and then we'll ask we'll take turn asking this question so what we'll say is what's on your heart now it's a very open-ended question and it's exactly how it's meant to be and of course, it's going to be a difficult thing for your man to open up and talk about what on his heart and what, what he will do most likely, he'll talk about what on his mind. And that's totally fine. And you can help them take it a little bit deeper and ask, well, how does that make you feel? You know, he said, well, I have this many clients and, and, and this person sent me that email and I'm worried that I have all these tasks. And how does that make you feel? And so what it will give you an opportunity is to connect on a deeper level and to give him a space, a safe space to express. And if he doesn't talk about feelings at all, then ask him about that. So listen, I noticed that you don't talk about your feelings and feelings are very important. The emotions are very important. And I want you to start talking to me about that. Now, as response, he will ask you the same question. He'll say, well, what's on your heart? And share what's going on. This is your time to speak freely. If you start noticing that you're winding up and getting upset, just stop, right? Notice this is your safe space to talk, to express what's going on. It's totally fine, right? And so it's a practice. It's not a one-time conversation. It's a lifelong practice. I'm learning it. My clients are learning it. It's really, really beautiful. It's connecting. It's loving. It's deep. And it is challenging sometimes, but it's really a good practice. At the end of the conversation, what we do is we each put the hand on our heart and then we say three things that we're grateful for or one thing or something, right? So I always say, you know, this week I'm really grateful for, and then I'll say something specific. And then he'll say, also, Olga, this week I'm really grateful for, and he'll say something very specific. And it could be something a little small, like you made a lunch for me. 
or I said thank you for putting air in my tire or thank you for being such a wonderful penetrating you know deep man in my life you inspire me your work inspire me right so it could be something small something large doesn't matter finish with positivity the last thing that I want to talk to you about when it comes to communication and being heard is something that you're probably gonna shut down the video after that and it's totally fine <laughs> but that's why my clients get results because we go to the core and to the root and so I want you to notice how the pattern of not being heard is a part of a bigger pattern ask yourself where else do I not feel heard is it in my business where I make a post and nobody responding right or I send an email and nobody responding I start a program and not a single person signed up where else do you feel unheard is it in your conversation with your parents because it's a juicy opportunity to clear some of these patterns that are probably feeding your current intimate relationship is it in the conversation with your children who like no matter what you told them to clean the room or whatever they're just not listening is it your friends or what is even deeper how you're not listening to yourself what are some of your inner conversations and needs and truth that you are not ready to admit to yourself, right? So where are you not listening? Now, this work is not a one day thing, but it's a good question to ask and you can ask it right now. Notice how not being heard is a part of a bigger pattern, part of a bigger picture. Let me help you understand. When I start working with a practitioner and I was thinking of leaving my husband and he was just horrible and divorcing, yo, yo, yo. Here's what she told me. She said, Olga, notice your patterns. And after just one hour together, she said, your favorite pattern is feeling guilty. And no matter where you go, you're gonna know how to feel guilty and you'll find people in your life who help you feel guilty. It's like, if you can make me feel guilty, I'm yours. So it's important for you to start recognizing these patterns. Because if I would not address this pattern early on, I would probably leave the relationship and find somebody just like that, right? Who can help me replay these patterns. So get very, very curious. What are some of your patterns? Get somebody to tap with you and to help you uncover those things so you can really bring them out on the open and release. Now, it's your time, gorgeous, to grow up and be happy. You deserve deep, committed, wonderful relationships. Whatever you're earning, whatever you're searching for, searching for, you deserve it. Rumi said it best. What you look is looking for you. What you search is searching you. Now, if you need a little bit more help of bringing up some of these patterns and uncovering some of these dynamics, I would love to help. I offer introductory sessions. They are either free or low cost, depending kind of like where you catch me in the process. And you can just reach out to me and say, hey, Olga, I'd love to have an introductory session with you to help me improve communication. So to help me recognize some of my patterns. Reach out, I would love to talk to you. I would love to help you. I would love to tap with you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.